Uh, hello, I'm uh, Tim Rich. I'm 46 years old. I'm a football journalist and I'm in Poland to cover Euro 2012 for a newspaper back in London. You can split it into two. The football has been exceptionally good. Perhaps the best uh, European Championship uh, since year 2000, 12 years ago. That, you know, maybe not come as a great surprise. A great surprise has been Poland. Um, and certainly those people who, before the tournament, were coming out to cover Poland or to, uh, or to, or to watch England, were saying that, that they probably didn't want to go to Poland. They were, they'd prefer it if it wasn't Germany or Austria or France or wherever, because they didn't really know Poland. And they were a little bit, not afraid, but anxious about what they'd find once they landed in Gdansk or Warsaw. But the impression that Poland's given has been uh, fantastic. I don't know how much the Polish government has spent on hosting Euro 2012, but it's been money very, very well spent because the image of Poland abroad has, has risen immeasurably. It's the first time I've been to Poland and I've been a, a journalist now for 25 years. And I've, cut, I've been to most places in the world, but I have never been to Poland before. And so my, I was more nervous landing at Lech Walesa Airport um, than I normally would be because I found the signs in Polish a little bit intimidating. I couldn't find a cash machine. Well, it's much more a typical European country than Ukraine. I, I know Ukraine quite well. And there you really do feel that you are not in Europe. Whereas Poland, um, the thing I felt about Gdansk, which is not surprising given its history, was it felt quite German. I've travelled and lived in Germany a lot, and it felt a little bit German, uh, well, more than a little bit German. Um, as for the um, the people there, you know, they were incredibly welcoming, incredibly helpful. The thing about uh, the Euros is that you go from hotel or your apartment to the stadium media centre, which where all the press activity takes place, and you go to the games or to the training camp. Um, and you don't really mix too much with um, people in the city. That's, that's, that's one thing I would say. Um, I was speaking to uh, Mats Hummels, the German, the Germany defender, and he was saying, well, he was asked about Podolski, because Lukas Podolski is, of course, he's from uh, Silesia, he's from, he's born and brought up in Poland. And it really frustrated Podolski that because of how the German team was sort of in their base in Gdansk, the only people he, from, from Poland he really spoke to were the hotel, uh, were the hotel, were the hotel staff. And I remember when I was, um, I was staying at a hotel um, up in Sopot and it had a, it had a swimming pool. And um, there were men and there were women changing together. No, it, it was a joint changing. What I didn't see were the little cubicles. There were little cubicles where you went in and you took your clothes off. And I didn't see those at all. So I began in front of this middle-aged woman just to take all my clothes off. And she was just looking at me absolutely aghast. And there was another incident where um, I just checked into a hotel. This was in Pozna. It was quite. It was about. It was about seven o'clock or, 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 or whatever. And I asked where the the restaurant was because I was hungry. And they said, "Oh, the restaurant is over there." And they pointed over there. And I went in, and there was a, a room, and it was a lovely buffet laid out, and I was the only one in the restaurant, which is not unusual. In hotels, you can often be the only person in the restaurant. So I began helping myself to this food. And somebody came in and said, what are you doing? This is a wedding buffet. The hotel restaurant is next door. Very uninvited guest, very brief guest. Look, the, the problem with racism is it only takes one idiot to stand up and say something about a black footballer. And then every fan is tarred with that same image, that same brush. Now, you've only got to look at um, England fans. England fans were, for years, considered to be hooligans. And in actual fact, 
I went to the 2006 World Cup and I saw English fans with around a place like Nuremberg and Berlin and places like that with guidebooks, with, you know, um, seeing the churches, the culture and things like that. But of course, it takes a very long time. You only need one English fan to throw a can of beer or to ins insult a policeman. You actually get the headlines. It's very hard to have headlines saying hundreds of thousands of Polish fans very well behaved. That's, that's a boring story. If you say Polish fans are racist and hooliganistic, then that's a story. But you only need two or three. The Polish fans I've seen have been uh, fantastic. Um, you know, they took the disappointment of being knocked out in the uh, group stages very well far better than England would have done. They've been fantastic hosts, um, and it's been, a, a, the whole tournament has been a real credit to Poland. Well, Polish women, what, what can you say about Polish women? They are, I thought, I, I was always asked, you know, you've traveled around, where are, where would you find the prettiest woman? I always thought Bosnia, Sarajevo. Is a place where I saw the greatest concentration of remarkable looking women. Oh, young women, I should say. Now, Poland, I've got to say, Poland, Poland has an enormous, a fantastic collection, array of stunningly dressed, wonderfully, you know, beautiful uh, girls. You know, the men, not so much the men. The men, the men have got a bit of work to do before they catch up. Um, but I've only, I've only watched them. I haven't actually gone on, apart from the waitresses. And the waitresses are very pretty and very lovely. But, the, um, but, but I've only watched them from afar. But they do seem to be very, very stylish. People say, oh, talked about Polish women. And I didn't quite get what they meant until I've come here. I've never try to find out if they're if they're too easy um, you know uh, I suspect <laughs> I suspect they wouldn't be very they wouldn't be very easy for someone like me they've got this way of being very stylish very pretty very feminine without being over made up there's one stereotype of the person who um, very polite very English will offer your seat on the tram will offer you seat on the train will um, try very hard to not to, you know, to be polite and not to give offence and um, and is usually quite badly dressed. And then there is the other stereotype of the English football fan abroad, which is uh, a can of beer and not a great, un let's just say, not a great willingness to understand the local culture beyond the makes of beer. Now, both these stereotypes, I'm afraid, are, are a bit wrong. English people are a little bit, but only maybe a little bit more um, more sophisticated than they than they seem. One thing they won't do, people of Poland, is try and speak your language. Uh, in fact, they don't. Because, but don't be offended because they don't speak any other language other than English. They're remar we're remarkably bad at, you know, even speaking. Uh, you know, saying tak and things like that. We just don't. That's about as far as we go or pivo, we understand that, but not very much more. The English image of Poland, has it changed very much since the solidarity strikes of 1981, where you have, you know, the uh, Lenin shipyard, the, the arc lights, the tanks outside it, you know, that might not have changed very much. I think a lot of people who were, who, who, who were offered the chance to go but didn't go, said, oh, this is a good tournament to miss because Poland. People don't really know very much about Poland. I don't think Poland has a, has a, a great image in England because so many uh, times you see Polish workers arriving in England to work and you think, well, they're working so hard and doing it for such low money that what must their country be like? And so when you get to Poland, you're quite surprised. I mean, the tram system in Gdansk is better than anything I've seen in England by a, a, quite a way. In the um, stadiums, they have terrible 
international sandwiches, burgers, and things like that. So it takes a while for us to get proper Polish cuisine. And I've, I think it's excellent. Although if you're a vegetarian, I think you might struggle. I don't think Poland does vegetarianism. The fish, um, the, the herring, the zander, the, they are, I had a zander last night and uh, it was basically fish and chips. And it was fantastic. Uh, as it, you know, um, as it should be, because the Baltic is over the road. The trains are a little bit slow between the cities, though I say the, the tram system is fantastic in Gdansk. There's not very much to do, there's not very much to dislike about, um, about Poland. The one thing I do worry, you know, are what, what happens to these stadia once Euro 2012 goes? Is Lekia Gdansk going to fill the PG arena with its 45, 50,000 seats every other week. Lekia Gdansk is, 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 is a club that I've never heard very much of. We know Lech Poznan, um, and they've got fantastic fans, so they'll probably be okay in the in the in the new in the in the um, stadium in, in Poznan. But in Roslav and 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 elsewhere, you wonder you wonder. What's going to become of these stadiums? I, 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 that's the one fear I have is that you know they look beautiful. The, the, the PG Arena look with its amber cladding is it, beautiful. It looks, it resembles to me like the Allianz Arena in, in Munich, but Bayern Munich fill the Allianz Arena every week, and I don't think that Lechia Gdansk are going to fill the PG Arena. Polish history, one of the reasons I was so attracted to Gdansk was because of its history. A free city, part of the German Reich, then it became Gdansk, then it became the center of the resistance to communism. Um, so it, it, from, from that point of view, it, to, to be in a sort of a half Germ, German, half Polish city, the German FA gave away books to journalists um, called um, Danziger Identität, or Danzig Identities. This is this is my last my last full day in in uh, Gdansk, and I'm I'm sorry to be leaving. Well, there was uh, Lata, the Polish footballer who played in the 1974 World Cup. Oh uh, yeah, obviously everyone's heard of Lech Walesa. You had a Pope. Do Thank you. Goodbye.